Thanks for having me. My name is Chris Hansen. I'm based in Denmark. Uh, it's a bit away from most of you guys, I assume. I don't know. Um, I'm a Power Platform Architect, been that since 2019. I've been working with Power BI since 2017, and then Apps and Automate came for me in 2019. And as per 1st of January in 2025, I am also a Microsoft MVP. So I technically don't really have time to be here because I have some summit that I need to look into. But this is more important, I've been told. So here we are. Uh, I'm also hosting the Power Platform user group uh, in Denmark, at least the physical meetings. There's both a virtual and a physical part, and I'm hosting the physical part. Um, I blog at skillsdrills.com. The blog is mainly for me, so things that I get asked about a lot, I actually write a blog instead of just emailing the solution. There's a GitHub available where the solution that we see today is available, for instance. And then, obviously, I have a LinkedIn profile just like everybody else. Um, but without further ado, I think we're just going to get right into it and show basically what is Power Chess in this case. Um, I recently found out there's people at Microsoft who also build a chess application. I was like, well, mine is probably cooler than yours. And it turns out maybe it's not, but I think it's cooler. And we're going to go to look into why this one is cooler. So first of all, while building a game like this, I would assume that it's going to take a ton of different controls, kind of like a ton of different logic, how to make all these things work together. But reality is that the entire chess game is actually just the gallery with three things inside it. And then you have, well, a full chess game. So the labels here are just like to communicate to the player and to reset the game. So essentially, an entire chess game is one gallery with three controls inside it. One of the things that this one is a bit unique for is the ability to actually drag and drop. So Power Apps natively does not support drag and drop. So there's a PCF layered in here as well which is built originally by Diane Bierhoffach, a German-based MVP, who happened to build this just as I needed it. But just to give a bit of an idea of what we're looking at, basically there's a huge start, which initializes a lot of SVGs for all the different um, bricks and pieces in the chessboard. So for instance, here's the light bishop. So those are just a ton of SVGs. And then we initiate a chessboard, and then we actually place the bricks on their equivalent spots as well. Um, and then we go from there, then all the logic is built inside the actual PCF. So here is a PCF which allows you to drag and drop. And again, if this is a need of yours, check out Diana. She built a really cool PCF. It's obviously publicly available. And I mean, this thing, this thing does magical things. Um, but what is actually happening in here is that there's this huge thing for unchanged. So whenever we grab a piece, essentially, it's going to figure out all the logic of where can bricks go, where they're legal to go, where they're not allowed to go, what will they potentially take as a target if they will go somewhere, and how that all works. So essentially, this is a lot of for loops inside Power Apps, and Power Apps does not do for loops. But we can manipulate sequence uh, a long way and actually end up with an entire set of what is legal and what is not. Um, so just to show the application, I cannot press preview here because if I do that, the PCFs will not load. So I actually have to have it playing in a separate window. But basically, why it always starts, and some of the more interesting things, obviously, is to take pawns, for instance, because pawns have quite unique moves in the sense that they can go one forward, but they can't go to the side. So these are obviously blocked. But they can also go two forward, at least on the first position. So I could push white up here, and it's actually allowed to do that. If I counter with black, well, I'll go one forward. And then just to bring in another use case, we can obviously move uh, here the knight. And it can't go these positions, but it's allowed to jump over the other positions as long as it goes two and then one. So that one could go there, for instance. And then just to grab the pawn here, it, can't, it can go one forward, but can't go two forward, because now it's not on its initial position anymore. So there's a lot of different logics going on in here. And just to finalize it, obviously, now that this one is within striking range, the white one can now go one forward. It can't go left, but it can indeed go right and actually get the black pawn. Um, and then basically, when you're done playing, you will be told who won the game. So let's see if I can actually manage to win the game here. I am very much not a chess player. I managed to screw that up completely. Um, so let's just be black and be very bad at being a chess player. Um, so here we will see that white is actually going to win by taking the king, and now the game is not being able to be played anymore. So as I mentioned already, and I think it's also being put in the chat, this one is available on GitHub for you to like take and play with. And just as a note, there are three things that are missing from the application. One of them is the ability to do castling, where you swap the positions with the, the rook and the king, so like to defend it. There's also no information on whether a, a player is checked or checkmated. 
and then there's no enemy to play against. Um, so that's three obvious opportunities if you would like to take this thing and like build it forward. So it's somewhat intentionally not finished. I have a finished version, but that's not public because I think this is more fun. This is a learning opportunity. Um, but one thing I did promise though is there's also business value. So this originally came from a customer that has, well, an application to an iOS. They want to go to Power Apps instead because it felt more controlled for them. But the very important feature that they were worried about was the ability to drag and drop. So why not do a chess game where we can dem demonstrate that? So in this case, they have three different services. Um, they're all called service one, and then have a start date and a, an end date. The Danish word for end is slut. It's not something profane here. Don't worry about it. Um, and then basically they have these construction, well, building sites where they need to do some sort of work somewhere. And they could put a guide, say, end of the door, turn left, turn right, turn left again, and then maybe you're in the right place, maybe you're in the wrong place, but uh, they might just remove the wrong wall or something. But now with the drag and drop instead, they're able to take the numbers and just, well, drag them straight onto the screen and say, where does task two need to be completed? Where does task three need to be completed? And then we have actually a full on grid here where we can drag our services down and into the grid. Um, so that's the same exact same drag and drop component with the PCF. And Diana has built a ton of different applications using this where you can assign desks to people, for instance. Um, so there's definitely business value in having fun sometimes too. And I think that was what I very much wanted to demonstrate. And I think I'm just going to cut it here and say, I'm happy with what I showed and I don't want to take up too much time. Chris, Chris, very, very cool. Uh, awesome. We'd, we'd love to have you back again. And if you have a couple seconds, so you, you were great on time. If you want to show anything within Power Apps and anything special that you felt was a learning opportunity as part of this, because like you said, uh, making the game helps you learn at the same time. If you have something at the ready, if not, that's okay. Uh, but if you do. I mean, we can definitely talk a little bit about it. So this one, for instance, a very important aspect of this is transferring what we're looking at now into a PDF. And Power Apps inside, it has these PDF functionalities, so you can actually print the PDFs. And I'm sorry to say, but they don't work awesome. So I am able to press here and merge, and that way I will actually merge the two layers, both my number layer and the visual layer that's underneath into one single layer. But it runs between five seconds sometimes and up to one and a half minutes, depending on the resolution of the picture and everything. So this is not the greatest approach. What we ended up doing instead was then we actually wrote the whole thing in HTML. So we layer the picture in HTML, we layer the things on top in HTML. And then we made a new challenge that when you convert a file from HTML into PDF using the OneDrive connector, it's going to limit you with a two megabyte um, size of the file. And considering the resolution of these pictures are sometimes 4,000 by 5,000 because you want a bigger high resolution, we can't do that. So we actually ended up smashing up some Python and thank you to Copilot for writing the Python. And within less than an hour, a guy who does not build Python ended up with a Python script that was then referenced from Power Automate. So be very aware of the limitation both of PDF generation inside Power Apps, but also the two megabyte of the file size. So you are able to get there without any um, external providers, third party providers. Of course, you could just get a license from whichever PDF convert as well. But we found the solution here to be much more, I'm going to say, fun uh, building with our own hands. And I think that's going to be the learning experience from this one in particular.